last time on HTML Canvas, Rado showed you how to use text and images and how to animate them as well. Now get ready, next lesson's about to start. Gonna code, debug and have fun. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Let's code now. Today we'll work with sound and I'm gonna use my son's toy piano to generate some. I'll record using Audacity and uh, you can download it for free if you want or you can use any other software as well. So I'm going to start recording and I'm gonna press one note on the piano. Okay, and now I'm going to trim it a little bit. I'm going to zoom in holding control and using the scroll wheel. And then I'm going to cut just this part of the note like this, control X. I delete everything else and then I paste it here in the beginning. And now I have one sound. I will save this export as MP3 and I will call it s1.mp3. It's here in the same directory that our code is. So save. Okay. And now I'm going to repeat for the other notes. Okay, now in Visual Studio Code, you will see here the five notes, the five MP3 files we just created. And I'm going to code a piano. We're gonna press some buttons on the keyboard to play these five sounds. And today we won't use the canvas actually, this is a general technique, but it can be used with the canvas very effectively. So I thought you should know it. We're gonna begin with the script tag directly. So we will write JavaScript like this first. And now we are going to start to refer to our audio files. So we do that by saying, constant s1 is equal to new audio of s1.mp3. So this is how we now access the file from the same folder. And to play this file when we are pressing a key on the keyboard, we can write something like document, add event listener. We used event listeners last time for the mouse, but now we're gonna use them for the keyboard. So the event is called key down, and then we are calling a function that gets some information, which key was pressed pretty much. And then here we are going to check the code of this key that was pressed. So if the code coming from the information is gonna be equal to, for example, the one digit, the one button on the keyboard. So digit one, then we are going to say s1.play. We are gonna play that sound. And that's it. We now have to close this callback function here. And then also this parenthesis from here. It's very important. We save this file and refresh the page. And now if you press one, You can hear the piano noise from earlier. It might not work for you. And in that case, first click inside the page once and then try the keyboard again. Sometimes browsers act like that. Okay, let's do the same for the other notes. I'm going to copy this and then here say S2, S3, S4, S5. And this is S2, S3, S4, S5. And here I'm going to copy this and say S2, S3, S4, S5. When pressing digit 2, 3, 4, 5. 
So I'm going to save this, refresh the page, and now when we press one, two, three, four, and five, it's just like playing the piano from earlier. But a uh, couple of issues. If you want to use the numpad keys on the right, then this is not going to work. I'm trying it now and nothing happens. So there are different codes for those buttons. And you could make it work with them as well if you want. Like info.code is equal to numpad1. And now you have to copy this. So if digit 2 is equal to info code, or if numpad2 is equal to info code. And same here with numpad3, numpad4, and numpad5. And now if you refresh, it works also with the numpads. And you can use other keys as well. This is a nice website that uh, you can go here in this part and uh, press any kind of key on your keyboard and it's going to tell you what the code for that key is. So you can use this when making your applications. One problem with our application is that it works quite nicely if you play different notes one after the other like this. They play really, really well. But if you try to press S1 many times one after the other, it won't play again until it finished playing the first time. And you can fix this by writing here S1 current time is equal to zero. You're basically resetting where it's playing from every time you press the key. So if you do this, for all the other ones as well, for S2, for S3, for S4, and for S5, the behavior will be different. Let me refresh, and now one. I'm pressing just one, but many times. And now you can play the piano pretty much. See you guys.